I'm going to start with some Play-Doh today because we've got a very special number. Our number today that we're going to be breaking apart is the number six. And so in front of me, you can see that I've got six balls of Play-Doh. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it looks a little bit like the six on this dice. Can you see two parts to this number just by looking at the dice? I can see a group here and a group here. So we could say that six can be broken apart into a group of one, two, three, and another group of one, two, three. But I wonder if there's any other way that we can break apart the number six. So here, this also looks like a group of, I might do it the same way as the dice, so it's not confusing. We've got our group of three there and a group of three there. But what would happen if I moved one of these over here? And now I've got a group of one, two, three, four, and a group of two, one, two. I still have the same six balls of Play-Doh. One, two, three, four, five, six. But what I've done is I've broken them apart into a group of two and a group of four. Have a think. I wonder if there's another way that we could break them apart. Let's spread those Play-Doh balls out and I wonder if you can think of another way that we could break them apart. Hmm. At the moment we've got three and three and then we found two and four. And I wonder if there's another way that we could do it. What if I had this little ball all on his own and put all of these together? I wonder what would happen there. I've got a group of one and I've got one, two, three, four, five. So over here, I've got a group of five and over here, I've got a group of one. And you know what? It'll still make six. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter that I've broken them apart into different groups. When they come back together, they're still the same group of six. So when we partition, then we can still bring them back together. Well, here's the super challenge prep. So I wonder if you can work out, there's my group. I've got one group here of one, two, three, four, five, six. How many is in my other group? Well, this is a little bit of a challenge. Remember that special number and you can't see it very well. Do you remember what that number is? That would be a group of six here and a group of zero. So I can also partition, but you have to use your imagination with that one because of course you can't see the zero. Alrighty, perhaps we're going to move over to the other side to find out what we're going to be working on today. Now yesterday Miss Baxter was very busy cutting up some counters, some red and yellow counters, so that we could practice partitioning. And you'll have another page today that you can look at. Just like yesterday, you're going to need scissors, glue, a pencil, your counters from yesterday, the tens frame page to use uh, as a, a template to help you learn, and then the number six page, which you can see over here. All right, I'm going to cut out very carefully. Have a look and check if my thumbs are on top. They should be. And I'm moving the paper around, making tiny, tiny snips, and I'm going to go all the way across because I need these two pieces today. I had five counters from yesterday. I need to add another counter in so that I can work with six counters today. Very carefully cutting out the border. You know how crazy I am about borders, preps. Always cut out the borders. And then I'm going to glue these two together. I'll leave that to the side. Now I'm not going to put this in the bin because this will be really helpful for tomorrow when I'm looking at partitioning number seven. So keep them in a special place, maybe on a special table where you've been doing all your work and don't throw them out. Now I'm going to pop some glue on here and now I've got another counter. So over here, oh, now Miss Baxter's watching, I'm gonna put that lid on. <laughs> don't wanna be told off. Now, here we go. We've got a tens frame here and I'm going to use this tens frame to practice. Let's double check that there's 10 there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I'm going to start now by putting six 
red counters on my tens frame. Now I have five and one more. Now I have six. Okay, now what I can do now is I can practice my partitioning with my counters. And there's a few different ways to do this on a tens frame. I could start by just turning this one over on its line all on its own. And I can see using the tens frame because we learnt yesterday that on a tens frame, a row, there's five in a row, so one, two, three, four, five, that can really help me supertize. Now I can see five. So the number six can be made up from a group of five and a group of one. I can try and move my tens frame around. What I'm going to do is move some down here because this can also help me see groups really clearly. It looks a little bit like a dice now, doesn't it? I've got a group of three and a group of three. So the number six can be made up from a group of three and a group of three. We can partition it that way. We could also partition it if I put this one up here. Now I've got a group of four and a group of two. Do you know what, perhaps nothing's changed. It's still the number six. We're just looking at what we can use to make the number six. Let's double check and count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I could even swap it. I could put these down here and now it's a group of four and a group of two that way. And guess what? It's still makes six. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Once you've had a go at making the number six and, and breaking it up into little groups, I want you to go over to this page, which is a little bit similar. You can see those red and yellow counters. The first thing you need to do is practice your pencil grip. Remember your middle finger should be the bed that it rests on, holding it with your thumb and your forefinger and you're going to start up at the dot and trace around the six nice and carefully. Now, what we need to do is check first that they're going to be six counters. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder if you can supertize right now and work out what this group of six is partitioned into. Hmm, remember, partitioned. It means breaking it into smaller parts. I can see a group of three and a yellow group of three. So now I can write it here, three and three. And I can put a big six over here because when they're together, they make six. Let's do the next one together too. Well, it's nice and easy to supertize the red ones, isn't it? They stand out. It's a group of two and we might have to count this in the yellow. One, two, three, four a group of four. So we had a red group of two and a yellow group of four, but all together, let's check if it still makes six. One, two, three, four, five, six, certainly does. Your job prepped is to go through and work out how many reds on this side, how many yellows, and write your answer here. And if they add up to six, if they make six all together, you can write your six over on this side. I think you could be able to do this independently today, preps, because we'd love you to practice your partitioning work at home. And we'll see you again tomorrow to learn about partitioning the number seven. See you then.